Boxing Truth here, back with another video. Make sure to smash that like button, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter. Alright, let's talk about one of my favorite fighters. Not. Let's talk about, in a way, fresh off his victory over Paul Butler. What was the more unanticipated, undisputed showdowns in boxing memory? No one outside of the hardcore fan, fans gave a shit about the fight. Of course, in a way, is worth watching. Definitely one of the more exciting fighters to watch in the game. He's definitely getting a lot of praise for his accomplishments. But anyway, his resume, if you look on Ring's pound for pound list, anyway has the worst resume among all pound for pound elite fighters. And there's really no debate when you look at it. He's ranked number two according to Ring. These guys have him ahead of Terrence Crawford. <laughs> Disrespect Crawford is getting, man. That's unreal. He's rated above Terrence Crawford. Some even say he's number one pound for pound. Boxing scribes already calling him a living legend. Already made legend. Living legend status, according to some of these boxing scribes. And yet, this is a uh, living legend status. This is already made legend. The Iran Diapians of the world. The Michael Dasmarinas of the world. The Jason Maloney's. The Jamie McDonald's. Going the distance of David Carmona gets you on that living legend status. <laughs> oh, man. In a way, his career is beyond frustrating, man. My boy is so quick, so fast to unify with Paul Butler, but was very fast to leave the 115 pound division away from all the threats. Willing to fight the Paul Butlers. Willing to move out of the 115-pound weight division from all those threats. Just to fight a bunch of average 118-pounders and get freaking the biggest praise in the history of boxing. I mean, he definitely has the accomplishments. He's undisputed champion. Probably the first Japanese fighter to do so. But yeah, he has the weakest resume among the elite fighters in this game. And is getting the most credit, the most praise. But why? It took him two tries to decisively beat an aging, ancient donaire. He almost lost that first fight. If it wasn't for the knockdown, it was, per it was practically a draw. Got his ass whooped for nine rounds by an old Donaire, then turned it around and earned a one-point victory on my card. Made adjustments in a rematch. Did what he was supposed to do to a 40-year-old ancient fighter. Just needed two tries to accomplish that feat. Not willing to fight a prime Rumbasai. Not willing to fight El Gallo. Chuck Ladito was his legacy fight. Instead, instead of chasing that, he he wants to chase and cherry pick a bunch of average 18 pounders. You know, at least he knocked these bums out. I'll give him that. You know, he knocked these average fighters out like McDonald and Rodriguez and Payanos of the world. Give him that. At least, in a way, is knocking these bums out. 
But it's crazy, man. What's what's in a way's legacy going to be when it's all said and done? If he's really going to fulfill on his conquests at becoming undisputed 122 pounds, what is in a way's legacy going to be? Because in regards to his victories, what is here that is really that all that eye opening, all that, you know, what's what really stands out in in a way's resume? It's going to be very fucking frustrating and laughable if in a way best win of his career is going to be ending up against Steve Fulton. That is fucking laughable. That's even if the fight happens. Don't know how it would happen. I think in a way would have to leave Bob and sign a deal with PBC for this fight to happen. This guy fights on the zone and no one knows who the fuck he is. No one really cares. This guy is a fucking fraud. Got a gift decision and got his ass whooped against Brandon Figueroa. And that, if that ends up being Inoue's best victory to date, that is really the work of a living legend? Really? That is the work of an already made legend. Beating a fraud in Stephen Fulton is going, is going to potentially be his best win. <laughs> Inoue's career is just frustrating, man. Bunch of legacy fights out of 115. He didn't fight any of them. None of them. Chose to fight some weak ass 118 pounders instead. And now he's going to go up into a, a weak and unheralded 122 pound division. And you got a fraud champion in Steve Fulton. Living off this gift decision from Brandon Figueroa. That's going to be his legacy fight? Really? That's going to be his living legend status? Picking off belts of a fraud. I mean, this is not debatable. He has the weakest fucking resume among all these guys. At least he fought Rumbasai. He wasn't in his prime, but at least he fought him. At least this guy beat Brian Castano. It took him two tries, but at least he's got better better guys on his on his resume. Josh Taylor has fought better competition. Lomachenko's fought better competition. Dimitris Bevel has fought superior competition. Canelo is Canelo. Even Spence has a better resume. Terence Crawford has a better resume. Alexander Utsik. Stronger resume. He, these two are practically doing the same thing, but I would say his resume is, is a little bit superior. You know? And this guy's resume is even worse than Golovkin when he was climbing through the HBO ranks, feasting on those hand-picked guys on the HBO airwaves. It's a very frustrating career, but he's he's gets the praise anyways, despite the lack of name recognition on his resume, despite the legacy wins, despite the legacy fights on his ledger. There is none. What's his best win to date? Two tries over a 40-year-old Donaire. I don't know. You know what? You got to do something special, bro. Beating a fraud and Steve Fulton is not going to cut it. Let me see. Like, can you make your career a little bit more memorable before you call it quits? You got to fight this guy and beat him. Let me see. Let me see something special, man. Let me see something special. You know, that would be living legend status. You know, knocking out these guys. Let's see if you can do that. Even Lee Wood. I'll be a lot more impressed if in a way moved up to featherweight and knocked out all these guys. That would be living legend. That would make up for 
you know, swerving and ducking the big three at 115. That will at least make his career somewhat memorable. Not beating this fucking fraud. Beating this fraud does nothing to me. Or beating this guy who no one cares and knows about. This division just doesn't interest me, man. This is Inoue's career. This is what he's always been doing. My man is so selective with his opponents. You know, him, Golovkin, and Wilder all display the same type of behavior. They all have explosive punching power when they were in their primes. And they all are very selective like a little bitch when it comes to their opponents. Overly selective. Quick to unify with Butler, quick to move away from 115 from all those threats. And now, your best potential win <laughs> will be Steve Fulton if that fight even ever happens. That is fucking laughable. That is not a living legend type status career. Nah, bro. You need to move up to featherweight and knock off these Mexican... Uh, Knock out these Mexican cats. At least one of them. I'd be impressed if he knocked out one of these dudes. Even Lee Wood, who's a big puncher at featherweight. But, you know, that's in a way his career, man. Weak resume. Big praise, despite the lack of substance on his resume. Picking and choosing who he wants to unify with. Avoiding threats. And beating frauds for world titles. That's living legend status according to some boxing scribes though. When it comes to Inoue. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.